Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. In today's video, I wanna go over some of the big mistakes a lot of people are making when it comes to finding their footing in tech, finding their first job as a network engineer, and what a lot of people are doing wrong. Because I've seen a lot of mistakes a lot of people have been making, and I'm kind of shocked about the types of mistakes they're making. For example, spending five years in college just to get a tech job. That's what I did, that's a huge mistake. There's much easier ways like going to WGU, right? WGU is one of the easiest ways to get a college degree in four years super easy. There's other universities that also offer that. Uh, another mistake is by search stacking, right? So let's kind of just go ahead and jump into some of these mistakes that a lot of people are making because it's really kind of, it's kind of sad because these mistakes can be avoided. For example, mistake number one, right, is going to college and thinking college is going to be how you get into tech. College is great, right? But you can either do it the quick way and the or the long and expensive way. So this is the quick way. Four months, $4,000. You get it from most likely WGU and you're good to go, right? This is the quick and easy way, which I recommend for a lot of people. The other way is essentially what people would do is they just go and they spend four to five years in, in university, maybe spending, who knows, upwards of $50,000, right? That's just probably the minimum. And you're in debt, right? I can spell debt, <laughs> but you're in debt, right? And you have no job prospects, right? So I would highly recommend this is very low risk and you do get a college degree, which the good thing about college degrees is that they do not expire. So that's one huge thing that a lot of people keep forgetting is that get a college degree. It doesn't expire. It's really good. So there is that. That's one aspect right there. The next aspect is, okay, now that you have this college degree, what's the next step? Or is it even worthy, right? One thing that you guys can do is if you guys are looking to land a job, you have to remember in today's market in 2025, yes, in 2025, you need skills. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what people say about you have to get this certification or do this. If you do not have this, you will not land a job. And I have never seen anyone with zero skills be able to land a job because when you go into an interview, right, you go into a technical interview and they ask you questions and you're like, hey, I, I mean, I don't know what OS, OSPF is. I've never configured it before. I've never done this. Even if it's in a lab setting, most people don't have skills to back up their college degree or a certification, right? I've, I've spoken with countless individuals who have CCNA certifications, but still can't configure devices on a network. They go into interviews, they show up, they ask some technical questions and they say, hey, I can't pass the interview because they want experience. Well, guess what? You do need experience. That's how you land a job in 2025. And this experience comes from you getting the skills. Skills gives you experience, okay? So that's something I want you guys to just remember is getting the skills. Now you may be saying, how do I get these skills? Where can I get these skills? What are these skills? It doesn't matter if the skill is paid. It doesn't matter if the skill, you, you got it from like from wherever, like you did it for free, you did it in a lab setting. A skill is a skill, right? Here, here's the thing. For example, if you want to be a professional swimmer, but you haven't been paid for swimming, but you swim a lot, you swim very fast, you have a coach, they teach you everything, you swim really good. You're never going to say, hey, I don't have experience because I'm not, I don't have any paid swimming experience. I've never been paid to be on a swim team. I've never been paid to go to the Olympics. So I'm not a swimmer. I don't have experience. That's where people mess up. That is exactly where people mess up is they believe that their experience has to be paid. And that's just, that's nonsense. Okay. So now let's just go back in here and let's talk about how do I get free experience or experience without me requiring to get a job. It's very simple, very simple packet tracer. Okay. And this is for network engineering. Okay. It's called packet tracer. I don't know if you guys have heard of this software before, but it's a free software named made by Cisco, which allows you to configure devices on a network. When you're able to do this, actually configure devices on a network, it gives you the ability to play around, right? It gives you the ability to do things that a network engineer would do, right? And there's certain types of projects you can build, right? One thing you can do by starting off just having, you know, configuring two routers together and, and configure routing, right? I would configure something like OSPF or maybe even configure three routers like this. Configure like OSPF, configure spanning tree, you know, play around with the network, configure IP addressing, configure like IPv6, v4, um, see how the, the things move around the network. You can start small. It's totally fine to start small and then eventually work your way up, but it does take time. And most people don't want to go through this, which I completely understand because it is hard. And here's the thing, guys, it is going to be hard, right? If you think getting into tech is easy, then just know that you're not going to do well in this industry, right? If you think it's super easy where you don't have to do any um, actual exercises or homework or you know, go above and beyond by trying to get the skills and you're not gonna do well. Pick a different field, pick nursing, where after you graduate, you're pretty much locked into a job. If you, if you want something easier, please do that. But if you guys want the ability to work remote, make over six figures and live a good lifestyle, working in tech, then just know that there's a lot of competition. A lot of people wanna do this. And if you wanna get ahead, 
you have to not be afraid of failing. You cannot be afraid of failing, okay? And if you are afraid of failing or messing up or whatever, or, or going through this whole process of trying to figure this out, and it, it's gonna be difficult, it's gonna be hard. If you go through this whole process, once you get to the other side, you're gonna have what is known as what everyone's looking for, which is experience, right? And once you get this golden experience, which can take you, like this can, this can you can either get this quick, right? Or this can take you six months, this can take you three months, or it can take you seven years, right? The choice is really yours. And if you're not willing to put in the work and realize that it is going to take time, it is going to take effort. And if you're not willing to, to put in the work, then just know that it's, it's it's all in your hands, okay? So now once you get this experience that everyone's looking for, now you can actually go ahead and start applying to roles. But before you ever apply to a role, the first thing you need to do is obviously have your resume set up. Your resume, don't forget about having a resume. In your resume, this is where you go and put all your projects from here and put it on your resume. Very simple. It's not that difficult. It's very easy to do. I have a couple of videos that explain exactly how to build out your resume. That's exactly what you need to do. Put everything on here that is from your experiences and you're probably gonna wanna do a lot of projects, right? And these projects are very geared towards what network engineers do. I made a video on the types of projects to look at. So look at one of my videos and see the types of projects that I was talking about. Then from there, once you do all the projects you put on your resume, then you wanna go and start applying for roles, right? apply once you start applying and here's the thing with applications it's a numbers game and you need to be doing minimum minimum 10 to 20 applications per day not per month not per week per day once you do this once you do about 10 to 20 applications per day you're going to get to the point where you are going to be getting interviews okay so now once you get interviews so we, once you go in here, once you get interviews from here, once you're actually getting interviews, you need to do your interviews and you need to prep for your interviews. You need to remember what type of questions to ask. You need to ask a minimum of 10 questions. And here's the thing with interviews. There's people who are very talented who can, you know, with what they call is the gift of the gab, who can bypass this process and do very well in interviews. But the far majority of people who are in tech are really bad at speaking technical knowledge because they spend all their time doing the labs, but without ever speaking it out loud. So when you don't speak out your knowledge out loud, then it's going to be extremely difficult for you to land a job, right? Because the interview setting is they're going to ask you technical questions. And if you cannot articulate yourself well during those technical questions, you're not going to be able to pass the interview. And then you're going to say, hey, they want experience. I can't pass the interview. That's one big mistake a lot of people make. So now let's go jump back right in here. So when you're doing these interviews, I highly recommend you take notes during these interviews. You take notes of the questions they ask you. You take notes of how they ask the question. And then just so you know exactly for your next interview what to expect. Because here's the thing, guys. After a certain number of interviews, and I've done quite a bit, most interviews all kind of go the same way. Tell me about yourself. Who who are you? What do you do? Tell me about this. Tell me about this. Tell me about your experience, all that stuff. I mean, it's very simple, guys. I'll make a whole video on how to pass a technical interview, but it's a numbers game as well with this. Obviously, there's a whole process that I have that I teach uh, to my students in my mentorship program. If you guys are interested in my mentorship program, there's a link down below. You can book a call with me to see if I can help you uh, if you guys are looking to become a network engineer. But the, the key thing I want you guys to know is when it comes to interviews, if you can't talk the talk, right? And if you can't answer these technical questions, which you should be preparing for, and you should anticipate based off the job description, because every interview, like obviously, obviously there are surprise questions, but there are going to be questions that are like, Hey, like I kind of expected that because you probably saw it on the job description. So that's where you got to be hyper practicing for those questions before the interview. And if you don't do that, you're going to be shocked when you don't pass an interview. Right. And after maybe like 10, 10 interviews at that point, you probably going to land a job. And that's when you get the job offer. It's that simple, guys. It's very simple. At that point, you're, you're, you're off to the races. So the issue is here, here's the issue for a lot of people is they either a waste their time with college, B don't put in the work, i.e. doing labs and projects, minimum five or seven different capstone projects that they can put on their resume. And then also not applying to 10 to 20 jobs per day, not LinkedIn apply, but directly on the website directly on the website. And then once once you do all that, once you do, you're probably gonna get about five to seven interviews a month. From there, you should be able to land a job from those interviews. Obviously, if you can't talk the talk during those interviews or you have self-confidence issues or you don't know what to say during interviews, please go ahead and join my mentorship program in the link down below where I can literally show you exactly how to pass a network engineer interview um, in 2025. But with that being said, everyone, this is the process. It's very simple. Do not overcomplicate things. You don't need tons of certifications. If you can follow this process, this is the easiest process that I've seen, that I've seen a lot of people have success with. Uh, if there is a certification to, to get, I would recommend getting the CCNA, but that should not take you more than three months. It should not, I'm gonna say that again, it should not take you more than three months. After three months, that's it. 
Like if it takes you longer than three months, you're clearly doing something wrong in your process. Most likely you're not doing enough practice questions and you're wasting your time, right? So I'll make a whole video on how to strategically pass a CCNA with very little effort. And we'll kind of cover that in another video. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate you guys' support. If you guys liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you guys want to see more videos like this, go ahead and feel free to subscribe. And with that being said, everyone, thank you guys so much. Hope you guys have a good one and peace.